Hello, I'm Sam and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about sharding. Sharding is a popular technique for scaling databases without needing to introduce replication. Today we're going to talk about what sharding is, how it works, and why you might choose sharding over other techniques for scaling a database. Um, so we'll see you in just a few minutes. Database sharding is a mechanism for keeping request latencies low in the face of a number of concurrent requests to your data store. Consider this scenario. You have a database on a single instance. Assume for now the instance has just a single core. A number of, a number of requests come in to query the database at the same time. These requests have to be queued while the database handles each in turn. It takes the first off the queue, responds, and then takes the next. The problem with this is, is that the request at the back of the queue has to wait an, a not insignificant amount of time. And as the, your use of the data store increases, as your users increase or your, app, uh, your data intensity increases, this queue becomes longer and longer. This means that request latency increases and your users have to wait longer and longer to get their data. One way of mitigating this problem is to use replicas of your data store. You can replicate the entire data set across a number of nodes. Then, when a number of requests come in at once, those requests can be split among the instances, reducing the queue time, keeping latency down, and returning data to users quicker. But replicating your entire database is less than ideal. For one thing, it doesn't scale. As your data set size increases, the total size of your instances has to increase by uh, the size of your data set multiplied by the number of nodes you have. And of course, as your users increase, you will rely on more and more replicas in order to keep latency down. The second problem with replication in this way is that every time an update is made on an instance, it must be replicated onto every other instance. This puts undue demand on network traffic within your database cluster, as you're constantly having to replicate every single operation that occurs on every instance. Also, if you have any consistency guarantees in your database, then you need to ensure that this replication is happening in a reliable and uh, timely fashion, which puts performance requirements uh, onto the back-end replication too. Sharding offers an alternative to replicating your entire data set. With sharding, the data set is split into shards or smaller pieces. And each of those shards is stored on its own instance or cluster of instances. This means that only one node or cluster of nodes is responsible for any given record. Using the ID for ex as an example of a key, every inbound request, we can hash the ID and determine from that which shard or instance the record is, uh, belongs on. Hashing like this gives us a reliable and consistent way of allocating records to, uh, to a shard and uh, the hash function itself should ensure that records are relatively evenly distributed across all of the nodes, across all of the shards. Now we can wrap this logic up in a proxy which would sit in front of your shards. Then when a request comes in, it runs through the proxy and is hashed to the shard which is responsible for that record. As with replication, this reduces queue time and latency, 
but also reduces the need for replication, mitigating all of that network traffic for replication, and also minimizes the size of the instances you need. Now, the total size of all of your instances grows only in proportion to the size of your data set rather than some coefficient of it. So thank you for watching that. Hopefully that's given you a good idea of what sharding is and why we might choose to use sharding instead of something like replication. You should, if you've already seen yesterday's video, be able to see why we might use consistent hashing here. If instead we used traditional hashing, then every time we added or removed a node, then we need to rehash every single value and move every single record in the database. But with consistent hashing, you don't need to do that. Now, if you've got any questions about sharding, make sure you leave them in the comments. I'll make sure to answer all of those. If you did enjoy this video today, please give it a like, click the thumbs up down below. And subscribe too, because we'll be coming out with a new video about distributed systems and software engineering every weekday, this week and next. So make sure to click subscribe so you don't miss those. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Sam and I'll see you soon.